Where's the board? The <laughs> we need a homogeneous, a homogeneous, and a chronic. Just to show you how much I'm willing to work, I'm willing to be proud. <laughs> I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I'll be gorgeous. I'll be gorgeous. You'll be gorgeous. Any minute. I'll be one of the other. Okay, Socrates, good. <laughs> Emotions. We need a, an actor. No play. Thank you. Right. Same rules as always. Stop when you like. Stop the show. Raise some points. Okay. <laughs> I have a question. Wait, How do you spell rattles? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what does it mean? What? Mm. The, the title. Yeah, Crandall, I said. Mm. Or on the correctness of names. Every name is a correct name, isn't it? Mm. Names or words? No. Well, yeah, we'll go back to so the we'll go to that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, very, very, very. Okay, Emogenes <coughs> starts. Here is Socrates. Shall we take him as a partner in our discussion? You're pretty. I'm just checking my friends here. Oh, <laughs> this is big if you like. Big here. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that translation, Mark? The translation of? If you like. <laughs> I like that. If you like. Well, do you know that the that, that okay is scenes or? Mm -hmm. If it seems to you. If it seems to you, right? Uh -huh. So it's not really if you like. It's not if literally. You like. right. It's really if it seems to you. Good. Because uh, how important is the ads and how emotion is? I just like introducing such precision, so we're in dialogue. He's not really a partner. We're just going to take him out. Um. <coughs> well, you know that I think that's the koino, you know, in common with in the middle of that ana koino. So I thought, do you know ana koino? It means to uh, um, to follow along in common with to go to go together with. Catalyst, whom you see here. Socrates, says that everything has a right name of its own, which comes by nature, and that a name is not whatever people call a thing by agreement, just a piece of their own voice applied to the thing. But there is a kind of inherent, <coughs> but there is a kind of inherent correctness in names, which is the same for all men, both Greeks and barbarians. <coughs> So I ask him whether his name is in truth Cratylus. And he agrees that it is. And what is Socrates' name, I said. Socrates, said he. Then that applies to all men. And the particular name by which we call each person is his name. And he said, well, your name is not Homogenes. 
Hermogenes. Hermogenes. Even if all mankind call you so. Now, though I am asking him and I'm exerting myself to find out what in the world he means, he does not explain himself at all. He meets me with dissimulation, claiming to have some special knowledge of his own about some special knowledge of his own about it, which would, if he chose to speak out clearly, <clears throat> if he chose to speak it out clearly, make me agree entirely with him. Now, if you could interpret Cratylus's oracular speech, I should like to hear you. Or rather, I should still, I should like still better to hear, if you please, what you yourself think about the correctness of names. Hermogenes, son of Hippomachus. There is an ancient saying that knowledge of high things is hard to gain, and surely knowledge of names is no small matter. Now, if I had attended Prodicus's 50 drachma course of lectures, after which, as he himself says, a man has a complete education, there would be nothing to hinder your learning the truth about the correctness of names at once. But I have heard only the one drop, of course. <laughs> so I do not know what the truth is about such matters. <laughs> However, I am ready to join you and Cradlis in looking for it. But as for his saying that Hermogenes is not truly your name, I suspect he's making fun of you. For perhaps he thinks that you want to make money and fail every time. But as I said, it is difficult to know such things. We must join you whether you are right or Cradalus. <coughs> I have often talked with Cradalus and many others and cannot come to the conclusion that there is incorrectness of names other than convention and agreement. For it seems to me that whatever name you give to a thing is its right name. And if you give up that name and change it for another, the later name is no less correct than the earlier, just as we change the names of our servants. For I think no name belongs to any particular thing by nature, but only by, the, only by the habit and custom of those who employ it and who establish the usage. But if this is not the case, I am ready to hear and to learn from Cratylus or anyone else. It may be that you are right, Hermogenes, but let us see. Whatever name we decide to give each particular thing is its name? Yes. Whether the giver be a private person or a state? Yes. Well then, suppose I give a name to something or other, designating, for instance, that which we now call man as horse, and that which we now call horse as man. Will the real name of the same thing be man for the public and horse for me individually? And in the other case, horse for the public and man for me individually? Is that your meaning? Yes, that is my opinion. I don't know. Now answer this question. No, no. What, what were you going to say? Then? What was I going to say? A man called horse. I don't know. Was there some particular? Oh, you just looked up. Very sharp. I don't know. Ah, this could be a case for you. Do you have an answer? Such that it sounds like the Theotetus? <clears throat> what are we to say about the wind? Hmm. Yeah, that's where it goes. Okay. No. Um, now answer this question. Is there anything which you call speaking the truth and speaking falsehood? Yes. Then there would be true speech and false speech. Certainly. Then that speech which says things as they are is true, and that which says them as they are not is false. Yes. It is possible then to say in speech that which is and that which is not? Certainly. But is true speech true only as a whole, and are its parts untrue? No, its parts are also true. Are the large parts true, 
but not the small ones, or are all true? All, in my opinion. Is there then anything which you say is a smaller part of speech than a name? No, that is the smallest. And the name is spoken <coughs> as a part of the true speech? Yes. Then it is, according to you, true? Yes. And a part of false speech is, par is false, is it not? It is. Then it is possible to utter either a false or a true name, since one may utter speech that is either true or false? Yes, of course. Then whatever each particular person says is the name of anything. That is its name for that person. Yes. And whatever the number of names any one says a thing has, it really will have that number at the time when he says it. Yes, Socrates, for I cannot conceive of any other kind of correctness in names than this. I may call a thing by one name, which I gave, and you by another, which you gave. And in the same way, I see that states have their own different names for the same things, and Greeks differ from other Greeks and from barbarians in their use of the names. Right here. Yeah, he's in the couch. Here he is, Barbara. Oh, he's in here. He's right here, Barbara, behind the couch. Oh. Darling. <laughs> 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 what are you doing behind the couch, huh? Now, Hermogenes, let us see. Do you think this is true of the real thing? That their reality is a separate one for each person? As Protagoras said with his doctrine that man is the measure of all things, that things are to me such as they seem to me and to you such as they seem to you? Or do you think things have some fixed reality of their own? It has sometimes happened to me, Socrates, to be so perplexed that I have been carried away even into this doctrine of Protagoras. But I do not at all believe he is right. Well, have you ever been carried away so far as 
not to believe at all that any man is bad? Lord, no. But I have often been carried away into the belief that certain men, and a good many of them, are very bad. Well, did you never think any were very good? Very few. But did you? But you did think that. And what is your idea about that? Are the very good very wise, and the very bad very foolish? Yes, that is my opinion. Now, if Protagoras is right, and the truth is as he says, that all things are to each person as they seem to him, is it possible for some of us to be wise and some foolish? No, it is not. And you are, I imagine, strongly of the opinion that if wisdom and folly exist, it is quite impossible that Protagoras is right. For one man would not, in reality, be at all wiser than another if whatever seems to each person is really true to him. Quite right. But neither do you believe, with Euthydemus, that all things belong equally to all men at the same time and perpetually. For on this assumption also, some could not be good and others bad, if virtue and its opposite were always equally possessed by all. True. <clears throat> then, if neither all things belong equally to all men at the same time and perpetually, nor each thing to each man individually, it is clear that things have some fixed reality of their own, not in relation to us, nor caused by us. They do not vary, swaying one way and another in accordance with our fancy, but exist of themselves in relation to their own reality imposed by nature. I think, Socrates, that is the case. Um, you pause long enough on the paragraph. Mm -hmm. Well, I had a couple of puzzles about these. this... Um, Not really sure how to express it, but I guess I'm wondering um, what the realm of the discussion is, because when we pursued the Parmenides, we talked about what things were, and in this dialogue, when they talk about things, they do talk about initially, you know, horse man and man a horse, but they also talk about virtue and good men and bad men and things of that kind, and I wondered if... Um, I guess because, I guess I wondered if though that therefore this this is a similar dialogue insofar as it's not meant to refer in any in any way to to common things. Just the fact that that paragraph interests you. Yeah. Anything to do with it? Yes. Well, good heavens, what could that be? <coughs> well, the hazusian for fixed for reality. Fixed is a is a is bit. Bebeon, but Usion um, is there twice, and also in in relation to their own reality imposed by nature. So that's real interesting to me. And now it's usual at such points that you'll tell us why. Why I find it interesting. Before well, someone else jumps in and asks. The <laughs> I get. I find, well, I do find it interesting. I, well, <coughs> since we did the Parmenides, I was interested in the, the, what Usia is. But to find Usia used in, in this kind of a context, it's fascinating that, that um, things are said to have some fixed Usia of their own, not in relationship to us nor caused by us, but they exist by themselves in relation to their own Usia imposed by nature. It just nature seems is imperative. Nature is well they're using they're using a verb for it. Pefuken. Mm -hmm. Seems to me. is used at uh, three eighty six in statement mm -hmm. Protagoras view too. Mm -hmm. Fluctuating Lucian. Mm -hmm. Or relative mm -hmm. do, do you think that things have some fixed reality you're talking about there? Yeah, and up in the top of that too. That there. 
Do you think this is true? Of ta on ta? The real things that the reality. That they're usia? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <coughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, but isn't he, is he claiming that Protagoras it uses the say. term? Or no. is he just claiming that? I don't think so. That would be a way of understanding the implications well, for. It's a contrast to views of usia, three actually. If you get used to demons. Okay, what, what, are, what are the three that you say? Oh, Pythagoras, the Cradley, okay. and you, and, and you the demons. But neither do you believe you the demons, but all things belong equally to all men mm-hmm. at the same time and perpetual. It seems like that's a third view. That's a general view, isn't it? That's the kind of a. There's all a belongs to each, and you can't distinguish one from the other. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. And in here, Pythagoras is saying it's specific. It's all relative. Yeah. And, and it's specific. <coughs> it's fixed and hard properties. Also, that belong is almost in every case I've seen it. I wouldn't guarantee is is not not there that I can see it. But all things are, and homoios. They're translating that equally, I think, and that's a word like same. Mm-hmm. As if you could say samely. Mm-hmm. You know, all things are are uh, samely. <laughs> yeah, samely to, to all, all men yeah. and always, right? which is what they're translating perpetually. <coughs> yeah, perpetual. Perpetual. That's a little different than I. Yeah. seems so funny that Hermogeny should be carried away and <coughs> by this, almost to this Pythagorean doctrine, and it's contrasted with a fixed, with a t- a, you know, a stable, a steadfast rea- uh, reality of things. How's, he, how's he getting imposed in there? Imposed by Pukemen. By nature. <coughs> imposed? <coughs> Are you reading? Oh, there we go. Set uh, E, 386. Mm-hmm. Oh, Pierre was talking about. Mm-hmm. Something imposes Lucia. Unless he's doing it with Ekhanta. Having or holding. That would mean having or holding. I don't know. Yeah. What's the imposed thing? I don't see it. I see. see, that would be, that, that would be a big, a, a big step if it were the normal way of the nature and it's not, you know, it's not Fuses. Mm-hmm. That's really not fair. Mm-hmm. It's not fair because Fuses is used um, throughout certain parts of it. Yeah. And that's perfect <coughs> form of, isn't it? Perfect form of. Pathukan. I was reaching for my lexicon. This list. It's a perfect form of Pathukan. No, Pathukan. Isn't Pathukan a perfect form? Perfect form of Pathukan. I'm just interested because it, it, the problem of the relationship between nature and you see it is really interesting. Right. Yeah. Because here, nature imposes. Right? Nature is. Uh, yeah. Some people, some people mm-hmm. maintain the view that you see is nature. It's the nature, you know, it's its particular yeah. quality, that kind of nature. Yeah. Heard that but this looks like some type of intelligence behind ordering or something. You know, as nature is an intelligence of some sort. <coughs> so what is it to bring forth? To bring forth? Produce. Bring forth to produce. Things bring forth. Not yet been brought forth to be born. So 
by nature. Very weird. Yeah. And so by nature. Yeah. <coughs> so he continues that in the next passage. Should we share with Socrates can things themselves and possess in nature as this is the same. Kefukuta, uh huh. Kukuta. And what are you getting with that, Ron? To bring forth? To bring forth. Uh, uh, did you close the book, sir? Yeah. That was the first use of it. Huh. <coughs> so by nature was in there, too, but you know, I wasn't looking at the grammatical distinctions for it. But the hick. <laughs> okay, how about pulling us in with you, okay? What do you say? Well, I'm kind of puzzling through this translation because does anybody get a clear shot on it? David, you got a clear shot on what's happening with it? I mean, I'm asking you because I hate to go bumble, 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 and then ask you. I thought I'd ask you first and then bumble, bumble if you don't have anything. <laughs> Don't you think that's, you're not talking about those wise. <laughs> yeah. It is extremely wise. I can't tell whether they're trying to find out what a name is or trying to find a way of looking at Lucia clearly. Right? And if they're looking at Lucia, then the question is, what theory of names are we going to use to approach this thing called Lucia? And so Lucia appears in all of them. Um, but the question is, yeah, they all use Hussia, but which one is going to be the correct way of interpreting Hussia? Is there a way of understanding Hussia with names? Something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Certainly the fixed reality is versus the other two. Could be fixed in there, couldn't it? Things prolonged. Uh, I don't see that exact form of it in here. Ah, uh, Tefuka Tavo, Tefuka. The Tefuka. I see for Puke. With an alpha? Uh, no, excellent. Okay, that's okay. So by nature. Hmm. It, it, because it's so impressive, because there's 143 different shapes of each verb, you'll get the major. Yeah, I don't know those. But who can is in there. It's buried within the knowledge of your... Uh, who can, very who deep. can, Dave. <laughs> Which means you're not going to see it. You won't see it. You won't see the inflection. What did you just say? There are 140 times. 144. 144 what? Form of every major Greek verb. Oh. <laughs> German. How many are there in English? I know. And you won't tell them. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't, yes. I don't know. <laughs> I've never <laughs> studied that. Sure. He's fixed. Yeah. Well, what do you say, Barbara? Uh, shall we say there are certain passages which some people might work on independent and come back and uh, mark them. Mm -hmm. huh? Would really be useful. <coughs> yeah. And call that page, one of them. Mm -hmm. By nature is quite big in here. <coughs> well, so by nature, not formed by nature. It's by nature, nature disposed. It's kind of dramatic. Well, it's either going to be by nature <coughs> or arbitrary. But still, it's like, a, it's a... See. Yeah, it's a, there, there's some link there, huh? See. That's a link. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's if it's, in, I mean, it's in post, oh, that's right. That's, yeah. That's just a higher... Yeah. Uh, that's, sure. that's informing, right? That's right. That's, uh, it's intelligence. that's intelligence, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's intelligence. And so, therefore, you see, it would be 
a reflection. Or, yeah. Or it could be body random. Or body or something. Yeah. Shape. Yeah. It could be the wax. Mm -hmm. Do that again, Robert. Well, if it's like he has imposed by nature, imposed implies doesn't bark that there's something imposing. Mm -hmm. Right. So therefore, there'd be something outside that we see it imposing. Mm -hmm. see it, right. Therefore, it'd be uh, higher because it's ordering the lower. Right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's shaping the lower. It has control of the lower. Mm -hmm. It's like a making. And so that's the question: is whether that's appropriate. Yeah. Is that imposed? Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Like we said, according to nature, you know, kata uh, would that be, or something like that? Mm -hmm. well, that's just according to its nature. So you see. It's almost just the opposite way around. Is that having you see it, it has a certain uh, being by nature. <laughs> Uh, in this, in this, if you look at this, this line. because um, it holds, as I would read this, it holds its, it, it holds or endures in the in the usia state, and then there's a certain pefuken that that follows upon it. That follows upon it. Yeah, that that you know, it, he's bringing. Yeah. That's like an ontology. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it follows upon it. Well, I you mean turns back on it? That's an intelligence? Turns back on it? Um, this, a lot of these uh, proceeds from it. Yeah, proceeds from it. Mm -hmm. So the reality, you see it would be higher than, than the nature. Mm -hmm. Remember that? No. You see it falls from it. No, we're still in that says, Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. But why don't we just go just a couple of paragraphs, I think. Uh, if we stay with his images, we might be able to go back and forth, back into that paragraph. Okay, shall we just try Then actions or? Yeah, actions especially. Can things, let me speak that again. Can things themselves then possess such a nature as this and that of their actions be different? Or are not actions also a class of realities? Their actions also are performed according to their own nature, not according to our our Wait, opinion. Wait, you start that again, Barbara? I'm sorry, I was I want to follow on. Then actions from there. No, can, can things themselves <coughs> can things themselves then possess such a nature as this, and that of their actions be different? Or are not actions also a class of realities? Certainly they are. Then actions also are performed according to their own nature, not according to our opinion. For, ex for instance, if we undertake to cut anything, ought we, ought we to cut it as we wish and with whatever instrument we wish, or shall we? If we are willing to cut each thing in accordance with the nature of cutting and being cut, and with the natural instrument, succeed in cutting it and do it rightly. Whereas if we try to do it contrary to nature, we shall fail and accomplish nothing. And I think the way is as you suggest. Then too, if we undertake to burn anything, we must burn not according to every opinion, but according to the right one. And that is as each thing naturally burns or is burned and with the natural instrument. True. The instrument takes a long time to show up and it's not here yet. all through uh, classic literature. I know you're familiar with it, but uh, it's, it's the model of the Zen, the Zen butcher. Yeah. 
Yeah, cutting the chicken. That was the who only had to sharpen his knife once. Yeah, spaders. Mm -hmm. And he knew exactly where to put the knife. And at the end of the day, it was just as sharp as when he started out. He you knew exactly where to put the knife, and what pressure, and along what line. So it didn't get dull in the cutting. Never get dull. So he was the master of. So now that's the same problem as making distinctions. <coughs> that's making a distinction. Chop line. That's the dialectician. That's the <coughs> natural way of making distinctions. Are you following the nature? Can you create a Can you create a vocabulary? Well, would you do it arbitrarily, or would you follow nature? Where would you make the cut? You have to make a distinction. You're making a cut. Right, Stu? Yeah, sure. Right? That's your familiar thesis, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Thesis that you're familiar with, I should say. Right. Yeah, that's right. So, if we are willing to cut each thing in accordance with the nature of cutting, you have to know how to use that instrument, the nature of cutting, right? and being cut, and with the natural instrument appropriate to the purpose. controlling metaphor. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to hear Thomas do? Yes, it is. That, that particular paragraph. Um, actions, therefore, also are performed according to the nature which they possess, and not according to our opinion. As for instance, if we should a attempt to cut anything, shall we say that each particular can be divided just as we please, and with what we please? Or rather, Shall we not say that if we desire to cut anything according to its natural capacity of receiving section, and likewise with that instrument which is natural for the purpose, we shall divide properly, um, effect something satisfactory, and act rightly. But that if we do this contrary to nature, we shall wander from the purpose and perform nothing. <coughs> Do it again because there's a distinction lost, or, or uh, our translator made one up. Yeah, because he brings in some interesting language that he brings in that isn't in the other one. <coughs> okay, actions therefore also are performed according to the nature which they possess, and not according to our opinion. As for instance, if we should accept attempt to cut anything. Shall we say that each particular can be divided just as we please and with what we please? Or rather, shall we not say that if we desire to cut anything according to its natural capacity of receiving section, and likewise with that instrument which is natural for the purpose, we shall divide properly, we shall divide properly, effect something satisfactory, and act rightly. But that if we do this contrary to nature, we shall perform nothing. It's really different. Well, it's, mm -hmm. it's uh, more uh, explicit. Yeah. <coughs> well, you see, if you go into the next paragraph, let me make a point. Okay. Then, too. I'm sorry. Then too, if we undertake to burn anything, we must burn not according to every opinion, but according to the right one. And that is, 
as each thing naturally burns or is burned, and with the natural instrument. Yeah, well, is burned, being cut. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go back, right, to the butcher. Uh -huh. If we're willing to cut each thing in accordance with the nature of cutting, now, what, what kind of a distinction is that? There are three distinctions there. Right. Right. Let's drop out being cut and say there are only two. And what do we lose by that? Right. Then let's drop out any one of the other two and see what we get in other words. Well, you see, the easy one is instrument. There's the thing just falls apart without the idea of instrument. Natural you can instrument. pair them up with any of the other two, can you? It's not clear to me what the necessity is for cutting and being cut. The two, which is for thank you. Yeah, thank which is what you're saying. Yeah. And would you equally say the same thing about the firing? Burning and being burned. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know. Certainly being burned and being cut are dualistic terms. <coughs> uh, there's a thing that does the cutting and a thing that receives it. But the nature of cutting seems singular. The nature of cutting, would that include being cut? The nature of cutting? So being cut means being able to be cut. It just seems like there should be something to make clear wh why or uh, what is the necessity for the being cut. Or, and I don't see it. Like well, I, think I not, can hypothesize. Why not, why not equally the nature of cutting? Cutting. See, it's the same same problem word we have up here. Kid. Same same word. Mm -hmm. Actually. That's the natural instrument part, as far as I can see. The pakupe. Like, take our master butcher. All right. What does he need? Certainly, he needs the proper tool. Down, right? mm -hmm. Well, he needs the knowledge going in up there too. What kind? Okay. Mm -hmm. Training and anatomy. Speech and anatomy. <laughs> in order to do what? Yeah, you got even, even though even though he may have the knowledge of anatomy, he mm -hmm. still has to, to know where the joints are. He has to know how to follow the sinews, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. has to know how to follow it with it's another natural lines. Right? Wouldn't he also Is that the nature of cutting? I don't think so. To know how to do those, bring those together. Hard to clean them together. Oh, yeah. You have to separate them. Natural. No, yeah. you have to have something to cut. Yeah, I don't think it's the nature of cutting. It's oh. being cut. Well, that's pretty Stay with the, the nature of cutting. Okay. If you had a knife and somebody to cut, I don't, I don't think you'd have not somebody to cut out, but somebody who can't cut with the knife. I still don't think you'd have cutting. You just have a knife and a cutter. I know you say you're voting for two. I'm saying without, no, I'm saying you need three. Oh, excuse me, I thought you were just voting for two. Go ahead. You couldn't have cutting without a knife or right, a cutter. All right, that's there. And something that's being cut. You couldn't have that thing called cutting unless they were all three. Yeah. You're making the being cut the object. Mm-hmm. 
as is burned is the fire. Is that passive relations? I thought that. Actually, the cosmology. The night and the fire were the equivalent. The cosmology is in the being cut. Is that that is just this order and decimal parts? And would we do this in English? Would we want this? Would want to insert that to make sense of it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I don't know. Isn't that the nature of being? Of, isn't that the being cut part the object? No. No. Something that's being cut. Problem. Yeah. That's the object. Something <coughs> being cut would be the object. Right. So he's got the cutter, the instrument, and the thing that's being cut. Uh, he said nature of being cut. He has a dynamic. <coughs> They don't have it, see, they don't have something being cut, and they could easily stick a something in there. It wouldn't hurt them. It wouldn't take like, two, two, two letters or three letters. They don't have it. They don't have a thing. Yeah. They have two verbs. One's uh, both infinitive verbs. <coughs> one's active and one's middle. I mean, passing. There it is. Okay. It'd be redundant if you put the something, isn't it? Well, you don't need it. I didn't see that. You don't need it. All right, you don't need it. So you put this on, you make it an up, then it's it's redundant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that can't be in there. Mm -hmm. Well, the nature of cutting, that's an intelligence, right? That's an intelligence. Right? That's an intelligence. And the being cut is the action? And that's the... Action and action force. All right. right. Nature of cutting. It's the essence. Right. Mm -hmm. Would be to know where to insert the blade, how to move along the lines, the lines, knowing all about the nature of cutting. The blade and all that. No, no, no. That's the answer. Maybe what that's kind of blade? What, what kind of blade? Well, instrument is what kind of blade? Oh. Instrument is particular, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Or the object. Mm -hmm. Now, all of this is going to be used when we get to names. Oh, and that goes back to that action is uh, from the previous paragraphs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, well, let's put it another one. Right? Actions are performed according to their own nature. Mm -hmm. So we have essence and function. And the thing itself. <coughs> See, what you anatomy studies the organs. Right? The the master cutter is is going to try to discover the where the where the division, he's going to focus on that problem of division, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Where the least amount of force can be maintained right. so that the least effort on him, the least damage to his blade, right. and the perfect. Right. So like dullness comes from effort. Yeah, dullness comes from The skill of a Formula One driver. Mm -hmm. Like the skill of a Formula One race car driver, using the least, least amount of engine brakes. And oh, you've been in my car? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Least resistance. Yeah right. Least amount of friction. 
He goes way beyond simply knowing the anatomy. Pardon? He goes way beyond simply knowing the anatomy. Yeah, he goes beyond knowing the anatomy. Yeah, but he needs it. Yeah. 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 Now you yeah, gotta know where the bones yeah, are. Really master it, master it completely. Yeah. Have you seen people chop up things that have been at it for years and years and years? Yeah, especially those Japanese guys. Japanese guys. Yeah. But the Teflon shade was good, right? It's chicken sometimes you see as much. Mm -hmm. I saw a film of the horse factory. Look at all it's a horrible film. Those guys were really proficient. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Or those Lush. whaling boats. Lush, yeah. Right. I tell you, the worst people ever cut chicken, you know, when Colonel Sanders came out, they didn't know anywhere where to cut a chicken. What do you mean Those first people. came out? <laughs> well, you know, when they... <laughs> <laughs> they were still there. They got everything mixed up. They got parts of the breast and the back and everything <laughs> mixed up together. And no, that was a screwed up chicken. Is that even <laughs> <know? laughs> <laughs> <That's laughs> a rabbit? It was a rabbit. The result of this, there are two things. What's the result of it? Let's get back for just a moment. <laughs> oh, um, you'll succeed in cutting it. Right, and look here. Succeed in cutting and do it rightly. Now, he doesn't put much stress on the instrument, the fact on the instrument, but that's the uh, Buddhist add addition to this model. But they play a lot of force on that. It'd be fun to see a Plato with Buddhist footnotes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, he puts, uh, he puts on the nature. They place more influence on the cutting, on the, part, on the uh, instrument. <coughs> they, the, they always say the mark of a master butcher is to look at his instrument <coughs> for many years and to see that he's never sharpened. It affects the back on the instrument. The effect of the effect of the first two is on the instrument. That's the way you can test the, the uh, mastery of one and two. Uh -huh. Then his conclusion, okay, his conclusion. Whereas, whereas, no. where was that conclusion? And all other actions form like that. All of that. That's, mm -hmm. that's where he. That's where he was after. Okay. He sure manages to stuff a lot in there. <laughs> What are we doing? I'm not sure. You want to start at then? We are? Yeah, you're, you're I'm sorry. Then, too? You want to go through the burning again? That's a little different, isn't it? Oh, we got the conclusion. Do you want to hear this burning? The burning? Yeah, why don't we do that? Hmm? Please. Then, too, if we undertake to burn anything, we must burn not according to every opinion, but according to the right one. 
And that is, as each thing naturally burns or is burned, and with the natural instrument. True. And all other actions are to be performed <coughs> in like manner. Certainly. And speaking is an action, is it not? Yes. Then if a man speaks as he fancies he ought to speak, will he speak rightly, or will he succeed in speaking if he speaks in the way and with the instrument in which and with which it is natural for us to speak and for things to be spoken, whereas otherwise he will fail and accomplish nothing? Accomplish nothing? I think the way you suggest is the right way. <clears throat> now, now naming is a part of speaking. For in naming, I suppose, people utter speak speech. What is the instrument in which, in which, and with which it is natural? In which. <coughs> Perspective. I don't know the Greek barber, but isn't that speaks in the way in which and with the instrument with which it is natural for us to speak and for things to be spoken? In the way in which and with which. Well, I, I don't understand that statement at all. In the way in yeah, I do. In the I, way I, in which and with which. No, I, mean, I, don't even know I, what he's I haven't quite sorted out what they're doing with that yet. So, but I understand what you're saying. Okay. It's likely because there's no. I don't see an end there. Any end. In the way, with the instrument, in the way, with the instrument. He ought to speak. Will he speak properly, or will he succeed in speaking? If he speaks in the way and with the instrument, in the way and with the instrument. And will man speak correctly? Who speaks as he pleases? Will not the successful speaker, rather, be he who speaks in the natural way of speaking? And those things ought to be spoken, and with the natural instrument. Any other? mode of speaking will result in her own failure. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Do it again? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's like the right way is outside of the fancy. You know, it has a nature of its own. And will a man speak correctly <coughs> who speaks as he pleases? Will not the successful speaker rather be he who speaks in the natural way of speaking? And as things ought to be spoken, and with a natural instrument, any other mode of speaking will result in error and failure. How how can you differentiate differentiate between a man speaking as he pleases and a man uh, speaking naturally? Yeah. Would not. Speaking as you please be a natural way of speaking? Well, see, the, the question you raise is on that same word. How are they using the word nature and natural? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, also because he's, he's opposing it to every man's opinion. Right. So whatever naturally is, it's not what every man yeah. is speaking of his own, his own way, yeah. which is more like as he wishes. Every man speaking as he wishes would be as he opines it to be appropriate, right. what, he, what in his opinion is appropriate. Whereas one of the elements of what we're doing is that he's saying that it's uh, different than that. that there's, a, there's a right, uh, natural way which is leads one to do to make an action correct, correctly. Yeah. And that would be like following natural distinction <coughs> using the image of the butcher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Finding the liniment, liniments without any effort. And not cutting into the bone. 
Right. Not cutting across yeah. it and yeah. cutting it at the bottom. As so in fancy steaks, possibly a pining. When you uh, think about the natural instrument. Except yeah. when you do it steaks, then you know like cut across it. What is, what is yeah, the, the uh, natural mean, instrument of Maybe coming from the belief, right? Yeah, well, natural way yeah, across the fiber. You know. Must be true. So is there contrasting <coughs> ignorance and truth or not? He kept the parallel structure yeah. Java did much more than um, the lobe did. Yeah. With the, with yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. David raised the question about. Do you call that the mouth or the voice box or reason? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Question. Well, you can't call it the mouth or the voice box because we, we don't differ at all in respect to having one of those. Mm -hmm. And therefore? And therefore, it has to be reason. Oh. Or so then, how is that going to answer? I admire it. Well, how about how the. That, how, wait a minute. How about the meat cutters? Do they all have knives? Now, what was that idea? Yeah. Yeah. Hold on, go back a step here. Mm -hmm. Barbara, what was your answer? Mm -hmm. My answer was... Reason. Sin. Was, huh? Sin began. It began sin. Well, and began then it went on. Began it. With sin, we are, not, we are each of us alike in having mouth and voice boxes. And okay. it's based upon my prior argument, which was that... Um, the way that one wishes to speak might be called the way of one's own opinion. And that Socrates is making a distinction between making an action from the basis of every opinion to making one in accordance with the right opinion, which is to do something correctly with the right instrument. Mm -hmm. And so that it couldn't be the mouth or the voice box. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. jump back to my beginning. You, s you see how I was reasoning? Yeah. And therefore, it had to be something on the order of reason or the intelligence or something like that. One so it wouldn't be, then if a man speaks as he fancies, it would be then if a man <coughs> speaks according to his opinion. Yeah, or which is what they have there, right? Doke. Yeah, it's doke. As he see, fancies would be... If kept that in, it would have made it much easier to see. Upon if that's, if that's yeah, the brief text. The natural distinctions. I don't see why the Greek has to be clearer. <laughs> you don't think there's a correctness of languages? It's supposed to be equally correct in barbarian. Either that or it is, uh, his alternative is rather ludicrous. We fall in the path of barbarians. Uh, since we're not Greeks. Really good. I right. appreciate it, Mike. <coughs> <laughs> no, we're partial. We, we're weak. That's, so. That's true. Well, you have a choice of translation. Why not pick English? <laughs> Any. I do. Actually, okay. I don't. I have All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Hermes has got a good one. Yeah. <coughs> I think. I thank you. I think the way you suggest is the right one. Now, naming is a part of speaking. For in naming, I suppose, people utter speech? Certainly. Then is not naming also a kind of action, if speaking is a kind of action concerned with things? Yes. yes. But we saw that actions are not merely relative to us, but possess a separate nature of their own. True. Then in naming also, if we are to be consistent with our previous conclusions, we cannot follow our own will, but the way and the instrument which the nature of things provides, prescribes, must be employed, must they not? And if we pursue this course, we shall be successful in our naming, but otherwise we shall fail. I think you are right. So now that's stressing nature, isn't it? As he's opening it up there. Mm. Yeah, that's what the mm -hmm. nature of things prescribes. <coughs> Um, then the argument would lead us to infer that names ought to be given according to a natural process, a proper instrument, and not at our pleasure. In this and no other way shall we name the success. Hmm. Um, natural process to 
nature of things prescribed. It's an intelligent agent, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It has to be, yeah. There's a level of following above the level of the nature of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. All right. Hermogenes, did you think I was right? I think you are right. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Yeah, I did. <laughs> And again, what has to be cut, we said, has to be cut with something. Certainly. And what has to be woven, has to be woven with something. And what has to be bored, has to be bored with something. Certainly. Then what has to be named, has to be named with something. True. And what is that with which we have to bore? A bore. And that with which we weave? A shuttle. And that with which we must, we must name. A name. Right. Or what? A name also, then, is a kind of instrument. Certainly. Then if I were to ask, what instrument is the shuttle? Is it not that which w- with which we leave? Wasn't yes. that you speak well? Is that right? Yes. So that's the right way of speaking or answering. It's a well way. Well way. Correct way. Correct is using a different term. (coughs) And what do we do when we weave? Do we not separate the mingled threads of warp and woof? Yes. And you could give a similar answer about the borer and the rest, could you not? Certainly. And can you say something of the same kind about a name? The name being an instrument? What do we do with it when we name? I cannot tell. Do we not teach one another something and separate things according to their nature? Certainly. Mm -hmm. A name is, then, an instrument of teaching and of separating Hmm. as a shuttle is an instrument of separating the web. Yes. Fascinating. Well, it separates the web, but it also shoots the thread across, hmm. right? Doesn't it? It doesn't shoots it between. Yeah, between. It, it, makes, the, it, makes, the re- it makes the weaving, right? Yeah. Does it shuttle? Well, does it go and between? Then, between. And then yeah, it, it does go between. Uh, because the other ones the are threads. pulled apart. Uh-huh. Yeah. Bringing yeah, it together, too. Mm-hmm. Binding and separating the thread that's broken. Mm-hmm. And therefore, you know about it. But it has to be split up, huh? And woven together. It's a whole. Well, what's that? The, 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 the acrino? Yeah, what is that? That's not se- is that separate or is it distinguish? The acrino? I was looking at it. The crino I know a little bit about the word, but at crino I'm not sure where that what that what format is from. Diacrinament, see, uh, separate things according to their nature. Crino means to, to separate, you know, to pull one across the other, to make a distinction. They use it often for word for making a distinction. Crino. And so it would be to thoroughly do that, or to, or to set them Push down. opposite. But crito, I'm not sure what crito means. The acriticon. Well, whatever it is, you see, we'll admit it. Mm-hmm. It would be a substance of education. Continue to cut.
But the shuttle is an instrument of weaving. Of course. The weaver, then, will use the shuttle well, and well means like a weaver. And a teacher will use a name well, and well means like a teacher. Yes. Whose work will the weaver use well when he uses the shuttle? The carpenters. Is everyone a carpenter or he who has the skill? He who has the skill. And whose work will the hole maker use when he uses the bore? The smith. And is everyone a smith or he who has the technique? Who has the art or the skill? He who has the skill or the art. And whose work will the... <coughs> teacher used when he uses the name. I cannot tell that either. And can you not tell this either, who gives us the names we use? No. Do you, do you not think it is the, the law that gives them to us? Very likely. Then the teacher, when he uses a name, will be using the work of a lawgiver? I think so. Do you think every man is a lawgiver, or only he who has the skill? He who has the skill. Then it is not for every man, Hermogenes, to give name, but for him who may be called the, the name maker. And he, it appears, is the lawgiver, who is of all artisans among men the rarest. So it appears. I'll turn it around. Do you think every man is a lawgiver? Or only he who has the skill? Then it is not, then it is not for every man, emotions, to give names. But for, but for him who may be called the name maker. And he, it appears, is the lawgiver. Giving names is for a few men. Who are called lawgivers. Well, he's making, he's making a lawgiver the name maker. Mm -hmm. They're one and the same. Yeah. And that's an unusual use of, you know. Well, lawmaker. Yeah. yeah. Because now we, we, we see that the skills got to be similar or the same, you know, the division, being able to divide. Yeah, if you were going to name something, you'd have to know where it started and where it ended. Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm sure it was. You know anyone, Rhonda, who's a name maker? Parents. Hmm? What? Parents. They're givers. Yeah. Uh, within what realm? In, in respect to nature? Yeah. What would it take to create a new man? I've done. Yeah, I've never done it, don't you? Sure. I've created it now. <laughs> right? Yeah. Pathologos is my name. Mm -hmm. No one has used that, right? It's in, it's in the literature, right? Mm -hmm. so. Intra, so, so supra personal right? problems. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right? Oh. Philosophical real life, right? No. 
Not the same one. Mm-hmm. The ghost is a pa- uh, gains a parasite. Yeah. Okay. He's as a parasite. Yeah. Psychic parasite. Mm-hmm. Like a corporation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the game is a corporation. Join or die. Wasn't there a movie like that? The corporation. <laughs> it's a deal you won't be able to turn down. <laughs> 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 it's called the organization, I think, isn't it? Look at all the names that came out of the computer. I can get them all. How about these nuclear physicists? These guys with charm and. Uh, those are great. Yeah. I love Dark Quarks. 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 Mm-hmm. and charm and love. And so let's let's push push a couple more steps. Mm-hmm. 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 Pardon? Mm-hmm. So it appears. See now what the lawgiver has in view when giving names. Look at it in the light of what has gone before. What has the carpenter in view when he makes a shuttle? Is it not something the nature of which is to weave? Certainly. Well then, if the shuttle breaks while he is making it, will he make another with his mind fixed on that which is broken, or on that form with reference to which he was making the one which he broke? On that form, in my opinion. Then we should very properly call that the absolute or the real shuttle. Then, whenever he has to make a... Yeah. God the maker. Deal favor. Mm -hmm. Then, whenever he has to make a shuttle for a light or a thick garment, or for one of linen or of wool or of any kind whatsoever, all of them must contain the form or ideal of shuttle. And in each of his products, he must embody the nature which is naturally best for each... Yes. And the same applies to all other instruments. The artisan must discover the instrument naturally fitted for each pur- purpose and must embody that in the material of which he makes the instrument, not in accordance with his own will, but in accordance with its nature. He must, it appears, know how to embody in the iron the, the borer fitted by nature for each special use. Certainly. Yeah. And the same applies to all other instruments. The artisan must discover the instrument naturally fitted for each purpose and must embody that in the material of which he makes the instrument, not in accordance with his own will, but in accordance with its nature. He must, it appears, know how to embody in the iron the borer fitted by nature for each special use. And he must embody in the wood the shuttle fitted by nature for each kind of weaving. True. For each kind of shuttle is as it... And this is ADOS, which is important. Because he's been using it, and he, and he, but he's been using it as former ideal, and suddenly it's still it's the same term, and he's starting to translate it as kind. That's common amongst these translators. Pardon? It's common amongst these translators to move around like that. Yeah, I saw Armstrong do that repeatedly. <coughs> he goes species, you know, species uh, idea. I had a question about that myself just this morning. Question about? You know, how they can justify that switch real quick. Mm-hmm. Like that. Mm-hmm. Transcendental understanding. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't possibly mean what he said. No. Yeah, we were fine. Yeah, you just decided synonyms here. We're just yeah. 
he could have used it. That's not a very good lawmaker. <laughs> is he saying, though, that the purpose is the nature of the instrument? Trying to see how they were related. Going back to really nice. Yeah. 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 <coughs> he must, the artisan must discover the instrument naturally fitted for each purpose and must embody that in the material of which he makes the instrument. See, it sounds like he's embodying yeah. the purpose or the instrument. Yeah, I didn't understand. The purpose. The form and the idea. The form and the idea. Same holes of other instruments. Mm -hmm. When a man has discovered the instrument, which is naturally adapted to each work, he must express this natural form, and not others which he fancies, in the material, whatever it may be, which he employs. For example, you ought to know how to put into iron the forms of walls adapted by nature to their several uses. The idea goes into the material, and then its range of adaptations is a function of the way in which he's getting information to adapt it to this or that material. We grasp the very nature of what a screwdriver should be, mm -hmm. and then he can vary it to meet many particular circumstances mm -hmm. and purposes. But he has to ideally put that in there. That's a good name. Screwed up. Oh, you need a Phillips head screwdriver. Like a Phillips head screwdriver. And the instrument is the idea in this deception. Mm -hmm. The yeah. idea that's, that has a particular function mm -hmm. that is, then is transmuted in the, in the materials mm -hmm. which are governed by other mm -hmm. conditions. So. It'd be quality. I, I don't know about that. I thought it was when the form and the material join together for a particular purpose, it becomes the instrument. Okay, that's what I wondered. Yeah. I thought that that was... I mean, unless you find a, a more interesting quote, and we'll all adjust. See, the artisan must discover the instrument naturally, naturally fit fitted for each, each purpose, purpose and must embody purpose. that in the material. So it By isn't grasping the yeah, keep going. <clears throat> and must in okay, and must embody that in the material of which he makes the instrument. All right, not the material so that's, that's using on it, but in the material of the instrument. Okay. What's the that go to? Uh, I thought. I'm, are you asking me the Greek, or are you asking me my understanding? Well, that, that of the English. Both. <coughs> well, I previously thought it was purpose, okay? And then when I read it this last time, I thought it was instrument. And, and now, it looks again like it's purpose. Mm -hmm. Which he discovers the instrument fitted for the <coughs> purpose. He embodies the purpose in the material, and that creates the instrument. Is the way I'm reading it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, what a purpose. You, you, know, you put the purpose in the material? What, what would that mean? Well, it would mean that he, that the ADOS, or that. Yeah, right. The, the idea. particular. Right. Yeah. That's what he's doing for purposes. It isn't. His translation of the, of the Jawa's translation is better there. It's, um, uh, Rhonda has to tell me. Yeah, but I'll have to wait. See that, um, this is the full of It seems, it isn't there. 
Well, it's actually good for stuff. Right? Yeah, do you see? Give to each apodunai, to each from out of. Mm -hmm. I think that's where it's good. Necessary to give. What it would do, see? What it would be doing. That poi? Yeah, poi. Poi, that's the doing? Uh -huh. That's its purpose. Yeah, it's the example. If an artisan were to be shown a shovel, <coughs> the, uh, the artisan who lives in Brooklyn has never left Brooklyn. Goes to a, a fair, an exhibit, and he finds a shuttle, a balloon, made by some 15th century Persian. And to be able to take a look at the shuttle, and what would he say? By God, what an interesting way they have of representing that idea. Mm -hmm. And he might be able to talk about what, what it would be appropriate for in terms of what... Yeah, but he would see the idea in the, in the, mm -hmm. the way they have, they have executed the creation of that. Right? Mm -hmm. Bill Gilbert had a good one. He said once, he used to look at some cars and the way they were constructed and said, well, that's the way they made or they manifested the idea of <laughs> I could go to totally different kind of car, a foreign car, and say, oh, that's the way they handled that idea, embodied it in that physical form, mm -hmm. and then adapted that physical form for the many kinds of vehicles they produced. Like he could, he could see it. Oh, that's the way it is. He could see the idea. And then you could see that same part in the various kinds of motors they made. They may have made it more or less more powerful or bigger. Or whatever. Yeah. I had an experience something like that when I first saw in Hall that they mentioned in your translation. Mm -hmm. well, well, I used to have uh, a boat and, and uh, to, to mend the covers, it's the, it's, you, you can just see how it, functionally it's a needle, but it's got like a, a wood handle on it to protect your palm, and, and the part that goes through the, the canvas or the heavy material is super sturdy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you can and it has a knot so you can draw the, draw the, the thread, thread back through. Yeah, right, right. It's a little spool. And it's like string, so thick, and uh, it's just, you know, I, I, w I was just, I thought, wow, yeah, this is really fitted for what you have to do. I was looking for a big, long needle or something, and here they had this instrument designed to do that. And you could see how that could be adapted to a wide range of uses. Mm -hmm. So pruning knife. Yeah. I, what? You saw the pruning knife. Yeah, the pruning knife. Yeah. Yeah, I had that same idea when I first saw the pruning mm -hmm. pick grapes. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I have your friend? Mm -hmm. Where are we down there? I said certainly. And he must embody in the wood the shuttle fitted by nature for each kind of weaving. True. For each kind of shuttle is, it appears, fitted by nature for its particular kind of weaving, and the like is true of other instruments. Yes. Then, my dear friend, must not the lawgiver also know how to embody in the sounds and syllables that name which is fitted by nature for each object? Okay, then my dear friend, must not the lawgiver also know how to embody in the sounds and syllables that name which is fitted by nature for each object? Must he not make and give all his names with his eye fixed upon the absolute or ideal name if he is to be an authoritative, authoritative giver of names 
and if different lawgivers do not embody it in the same syllables, we must not forget this ideal name on that account. For different smiths do not embody the form in the same iron, though making the same instrument for the same purpose. But so long as they reproduce the same ideal, though it be in different iron, still the instrument is as it should be, whether it be made here or in foreign lands, is it not? Certainly. On this basis, then, you will judge the lawgiver, whether he be here or in a foreign land, so long as he gives to each thing the proper form of the name, in whatsoever syllables, to be no worse lawgiver, whether here or anywhere else, will you not? Certainly. Now, he who is likely to know whether the proper form of shuttle is embodied in any piece of wood, now, who is likely to know whether the proper form of shuttle is embodied in any piece of wood? The carpenter who made it, or the weaver who is to use it? Probably the one who is to use it, Socrates. Then, who is to use the work of the lyre maker? Is not he the man who would know best how to superintend the making of the lyre, and would also know whether it is well made or not when it is finished? Certainly. Who is he? The lyre player. And who would know best about the work of the shipbuilder? The navigator. And who can best superintend the work of the law giver and judge of it when it is finished, both here and in foreign countries? The user, is it not? Yes. And is not this he who knows how to ask questions? Certainly. <laughs> and the same one knows how also to make reply? Yes. And the man who knows how to ask and answer questions, you call a dialectician? Yes, that is what I call him. The work of the carpenter, then, is to make a rudder under the supervision of the steersman, if the rudder is to be a good one. That's what the equipment is not. I mean, that's the clearest example of Hmm. Mm. It's just that I didn't mean to be cryptic. In that very simple paragraph, it just boils it all down, captures it so quickly. So the user's art is higher then, isn't it? And the work of the lawgiver, as it seems, is to make a name with the dialectician as his supervisor, if the names are to be well given. True. Then Hermogenes. The giving of names can hardly be, as you imagine, a trifling matter, or a task for trifling or casual persons. And Cratylus is right in saying that names belong to things by nature, and that not everyone is an artisan of names, but only he who keeps in view the name which belongs by nature to each particular thing and is able to embody its form in the letters and the syllables. So place to break? <coughs> What time is it? No, you got another. So the name doesn't have anything to do with the What time? Quarter to twelve. Good time. Good place. But the name doesn't have anything to do with the letters in the syllable. Oh, the next time we'll go. All right. Ten sections. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.
being a lawgiver and being able to give the correct English translation and still knowing that he had to be a dialectician to judge it. He did a good job of it. And how much did it pay? Pay part? I wonder how much the universities would pay for a position like that. For a translation? No, okay. Go ahead. Yeah, what would they say? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.